Alright, we're going to be playing a MMORPG from the 90s today, called Azuron's Call. I have some, something called Burundi Tools added, which makes the process of playing this game much easier. Considering the grind, if you were to actually level up manually, is quite long. As you'll see by my character info here, we'll pull up how long he's been online. And we'll turn off the combat macros, we'll do that automatically. Just to give an idea, this account has been playing for one month, two weeks, one day, 17 hours, 17 minutes, 7 minutes and 50 seconds. To get to level 275. This specific character, with this game you have, there's a lot of customizations. You have the base attributes. I started with what's called a a gimp build for melee which is 100 strength, 100 coordination, 100 quickness, then 10 endurance, 10 focus, 10 self. Which means you start with 5 health in the beginning, but by end game it gives you a lot of additional benefits. When you die you do have a vitae penalty, which I died the last time I played this game so I still have a vitae penalty. It's 5% per death up to 40%. So if you die repeatedly, you might be going back to fighting stuff that you fought 20, 30, 40 levels before. So this specific character has arcane lore, which allows you to use magical items, heavy weapons, and melee defense specialized. Also has some crafting skills, armor tinkering, weapon tinkering, so I can do modifications to armor and weapons. Have item creature and life magic, which allows me to do buffs. And dual wield have healing and lockpick, which are both both usable skills when questing and in, for healing in combat, as well as crafting skills. I can craft healing kits, craft keys, and other items. Have item tinkering as well, magic missile defense. I have mana conversion here, which actually helps you save mana when you're casting spells. It's not. The more points I put into this, it's not going to be a set amount. There is some RNG involved. But it is possible to cast the highest level buffs in this game with just two mana. Alright, so we're going to do a basic quest here. I do have Megan here, my wife, who is a, about as casual as you can get when it comes to games like this. And what's interesting is despite this being a, it's not the most difficult game, I'd say EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot, and others from that time are more difficult. It's definitely much more difficult than modern day WoW. Easier than Star Wars Galaxies, it's somewhere in between. But this game is full of so, so much lore where she is able to identify the different races and understand, oh yeah, the Imperians were here first. That's a tomb rock, etc. A lot of modern day games have rather forgettable characters. Yeah, there's quite a bit of customization. Graphics aren't the best, but really the graphics are sufficient. So, you're finishing your buffs. Let's let this character finish the buffs. In the meantime, let's see if I have materials where I can do a crafting task of some sort. Let's see... Well, not at the moment, it doesn't look like. But we'll demonstrate that either in a later video or this video. We're both PK, which means I can sneak up behind her and stab her a couple times. Her character is a rather interesting build. Start with the same GIMP build, but with a lot of focus augmentations. Actually has war magic as well as heavy weapons dual wield trained. Which the war magic isn't sufficient for end game content, but it does add it does add extra abilities during PvP that are useful. Sorry. 
Come follow me. We're gonna do a basic quest, so we'll head down here. It used to be you had to run from town to town. Each town would have two or three portals nearby. You had to find the portal just to go to the next town. And you had to know what the whole series of portals would be to get from town A to town B. Which might be four or five portals in that string. Now we have this feature of the town network. But yeah, we're going to demonstrate a very basic quest here. Come on, go ahead and follow me. I think what we'll do is we'll go in. What should we do? We'll show some lower level. Actually, no. We'll, yeah, we'll show some lower level content first, I think. So, come on. I am Chicken Egg the first, which that's what I'll be on most of the games I play. Here we have a character standing here. Let's just see if there's permission. And get permission. I don't, even though it's a just a character in game, and we're not really involving her. Just get permission. No permissions granted. I'll cut it out. You can go ahead and wave to the people. Looks like they're AFK, so we might end up cutting that part out. But yeah, go ahead and follow me. We're going to. What should we do? You want Tuskers? Should we do the Tuskers? Yeah, I like Tuskers. Let's demonstrate the Tuskers. Yeah, now, this content's obviously way, way, way too easy for the level we're at. Right. It's fine. The Tuskers are one of the many species in the game that are unique. Now you might just say, oh, this is just a combination between a monkey and something else. But it is a game, and people 20 years after playing this game, I guess like 10 years hasn't been quite that long, will remember the Tuskers. It's the first species here. Yep. Oh, oops. So you see with dual wield, I have dual wield daggers that are multi-strike. Means... I can do up to 61 damage. Okay, that's not. Yeah, I can do up to 62 damage on this dagger. And I can get two hits in per turn per dagger, which means I get a total of four hits and be up to 62 damage. For heavy weapons, even though the axe is, I think, quite a bit cooler looking, dual wielding daggers give you the best chance to kill an enemy quicker. So we're just going to kind of run through this. Here's a Tusker guard. There's a point in time where these were quite the difficult creature to take on, but not anymore. This is just a standard. Whoa. Okay, why is this doing that? Apparently my aim sucks and I keep hitting Megan here, so. Some more Tuskers here. Now imagine being a level 30, 40 character here. You're already swarmed by all these Tuskers. So let's keep going down the dungeon. Okay. Went down. Yeah, we went down. More Tuskers, which really aren't a problem. However, I do want to sh show off something. There's loot in this game. From that I got a potion of healing, which that's not a very good one. And a crossbow. This crossbow has every weapon or item you pick up, armor, has a variety of stats. 
You know, damage bonus, first one, damage modifier, speed, range, spells, activation requirement, mana, mana cost. All of those are random based on a tiers 1 through 9, I believe. I think in an emulator they have tier 1 through 7 or 1 through 6 loot. So let's, I'm not sure what tier these are. Let's say they're tier 2 creatures. You can get anything from tier 1 to 3 off of them. Which isn't terribly useful at endgame, but it does create a situation where you have a variety of items in the game that are all unique. You can actually be the person that has all the best rendered fire weapons in the game, or you could be the person that has the best tinkered armor in the game. And while leveling as a crafter isn't viable, there are a lot of other options such as questing and also joining fellowships. You can actually level up a character that is solely a crafter and get to end game. They're not going to do the dungeon content, but yeah, where'd he go? Okay. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, let's go this way. Yeah, let's get these tuskers out of the way. This is one of the less exciting dungeons. Oh, it's fine. So let's keep going this way. Now obviously I know where to go in this dungeon, but there is a few different levels to dungeon. Easy to get lost. However, a lot of the dungeons are structured where either taking all lefts, all rights, or going straight. It's often the answer with a few exceptions. But yeah, keep going. I keep looting and I don't need loot. Because <laughs> it's all gone already. Yeah, let's get rid of the. We'll turn that off for a minute. Yeah. I mean, it makes it easier for me. Than it used to do that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and loot one of these. Nothing terribly useful. Got a variety of items. Go ahead and take the Stanima item. Oh, that thing is nice, though. Oh, the horn! Did I get it? I need the horn. Or did I already pick one up? Because. Oh, it won't let me get it, so I must have already got one. Did you get the horn, Matt? Because there's one right here. Yeah, we need to turn the loot off so it doesn't. Yeah, come here. Because there's a horn right here. See how there's a horn there? See, I can't get it, right? So does that mean I already have one? Yeah. It might be a little... Oh, I can't level up anymore. <laughs> but I can get experience, right? You can get experience. Ins for augmentation. We got the Tusker's Tusk. And we are going to just. Oh, is it called the Tusk? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and just. See if I have a portal here to the town network. Should go ahead and just do, do the slash AH. Okay. We'll head back. I play on two different servers, and I remember two different guilds. Which the one guild mostly left this server, so on this server I played with the Evolution of Light. You have the Monarch Light and Shadow, and then I'm part of the Crimson Order on other servers. Alright. There you are. So what are we going to do? We need to do another quest. So let's see. Let's see what I have as far as portals. Do a higher level quest. Don't go in any of these. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. That's okay. Are you not bad? 
All right, that one, this is Path of the Blind you're seeing. Where's These that? are some, it's the one with the Lugans that. Oh my, my gosh, gosh, that's tough. Probably one of the, probably the second toughest dungeon in game at the we moment. We both died in that, and yeah. at the highest level. I, I love, love that, that one, though. So what, what else do I have on here? Actually, it's a challenge. Let's see what I have on the primary portal. Coral caves. We'll go in this one. It's see. I have a variety of items in my bag. These are these are ancient coral golems. I'm going to show you something neat. Oh, we got permission from Maggie to include her. So, anyways, we're playing on Relic Dawn. Uh, Relic Dawn dot com is where you get information. And if you have a launcher, are able to use the server address is server dot Relic Dawn dot port nine thousand. Now, the neat thing is, even though I'm a melee character, I do have life magic. So I can use life magic spells to try to attack these. Yeah. So those are golems. Go ahead and follow me. I'm going to demonstrate life magic here. Now let's set you up so you're doing real magic. Even though we're not mages, in many games if you're not a mage you can't use mage skills. So. Hold on one moment, we'll cut this out in a finalized video. Attacks you probably want to do, sh do shock arc on these. For yep, all right, all right we're back. Don't I just yeah. hit two? Yeah, just hit two. Now, this game does have collision. Now, if we were not player marked as player killers, I would run right through her. However, since we are player killers, there's collision, which means I run into her and she blocks me. Which creates an interesting situation. If you're trying to unlock a door, you can actually use a PK ability to get onto the other side of a locked door. Kind of a bug that never got fixed. I think it requires PK light. You stand in the same spot as another person, turn on PK light, turns on collision. Can't have people in the same space. The person gets teleported close by which would be on the other side of the door all right so let's keep going down here just follow me we'll do this. go ahead and try your magic on these be life mage yeah the... where are you Where did you go? Where are you? Let's 
Or in the... So you have easy illusion. Dungeons are kind of meat. This is... Here's somebody using spells somewhere. Just follow where the golems are. And the thing. Do you have red golems around? So you see, there's a lot of macro programs, so if I set that up, it turns this into quite the easy... Oh, what? That was maybe... Well, it doesn't kill them right away when I do this, so maybe I should do one. Instead of two. Yeah, you can try one. You can, you can try any of them and see which one yeah, works one best. You can check these, you can see what you can find. Well, what they will find you. So I'm going to find a moat. It's an old quest I'm in the game. I'm over by, like, where a portal is. Oh, I know where that is. See, there are some bugs in the game. See, right now I'm attacking an invisible golem. Yeah, this game has 600 square miles of content. There you are. 600 square miles of open world content and numerous dungeons. And you can just start running in one direction for 15, 20 minutes. Come across the dungeon. If you meet the level requirement, you're good to go. Alright, so follow me. People do kind of skate around. Yeah. Especially the Empyreans. Yes. Actually, are we going the right way? Uh, hold on, let me check. Stay right there. Yeah, I'm staying. I really lose people in these mazes. Yeah, we're not going the right way. So follow me back. Go west. Is this way? What time is it? Seventeen fifty-five. Yeah, we still have time. Uh oh, my buffs are running out. I think military time's the best time to use. Let's keep going down. You attack these guys Did while I buff. Keep these people off my back. Why did I move all over the place? Oh my gosh. Well, I know where you are. What's going on? You're fine, just stay right. Uh, It is an old game, it has a lot of quirks. Well, let's say let's say a group of level of ten people were able to meet the level requirement here. Actually, let's say one hundred level level ten through whatever, just hundred different people came to this dungeon. There, there's only one instance of this dungeon. Which means people come here and it's all the same. Everybody's in the same dungeon. It's not like Elder Scrolls Online where it's a bunch of instants. Dungeons where you might have, or even worse, instance towns where you might. One person's in a town that's burning down, trying to save it. All your friend who's a level after that is in a town that's just fine. Yet it's the same town. Somehow that's supposed to be immersive in some way. Alright, we need, we're going the wrong way. Come back down. 
Yeah. I used to lead quests on this server. I'm probably the. I eventually get people to where we need to go. Because but... you had a map. <laughs> yeah, then you do need a map. Even with a map, though, these dungeons are quite the maze. All right. right. Red golems means we're on track. So the quest we're doing is for Cardo's Blood Gym. We'll get a. You get three pieces of a gym, combine them, and then give them to somebody for XP. See if we find a moat. I even have the pyral peas here, which are a bunch of spell components combined together. Which you can actually sell at the vendors for quite a lot of money. So let's, let's just run by all this stuff to the bottom. I'll run by everything. Yeah. These are level 115. Just the thing to keep in mind is the level doesn't really matter that much. Nor is a higher level of creature necessarily going to give you XP that's greater. One of the toughest dungeons in the game, creatures give XP that's less than a million. Despite having higher level creatures there. Yeah, you can go to a place called Weathered Beach with a bunch of level 160 creatures and get over a million experience per kill. Oh, somebody just used a spike. Oh, yeah. shock. No, I just saw the spike go by me. Oh, you could actually yeah. see the spike? Yep. Oh, I didn't know you could now see Now these it. keys, the sturdy steel and the sturdy iron keys back in the day, used to be often used as currency and were quite valuable. Back when level 6 spells were the best you could do, you could get gear as level 6 from those chests. With the current state of the game, the, they're rather worthless. You know, occasionally there's certain chests that might give you it Might be nice, at least from for nostalgic sake. Now I got an another key. Well, let's collect them anyway. Let's keep going down. Uh oh. Are they gonna let us through? Let's ask. Let's ask. We gotta ask him if we can go through. Actually, we probably just need to do the lever. There we go. Another ancient coral golem. We'll get rid of him. At the bottom of the dungeon now. Oh, we're looking for the blood golems. We'll see you soon enough. Still no moats. Come on. Follow me down here. I like the flower. Here we got a blood golem. It's like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> here, there's a lot of interesting textures used here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're gonna kill the blood golems down here. Blood golems? blood golems! See, they're made out of blood. I've never seen blood golems. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere you go, there's new creatures in this game. That's cool. So we need one red, one blue, and one green, I believe. Alright, so loot the corpse I'm standing on and get the red gem. Okay. Red blood gem. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a quest we haven't done. Well, you haven't done before, I have. Yeah, I've never done. Got a whole load of blood golems here. Yeah. And obviously, these are kind of. This is a quest I'd be doing probably 150 levels ago. And basically, if you start off going west, take all lefts, and you will end up down here. 
Okay, I have... We need red, blue, and green. So just start looting the corpses. Here? Yeah. Okay. Trying to find a... So there's a blue over here? Yeah. How come I can't see it? Oh, wait. You get the blue blood gem it's fragment? It's red again. Alright, where I'm standing, this corpse over here has one. Oh, I'm sorry. What's great about this game is it is... It's not the easiest game to get into, but it's easy enough where... Where is that red? I don't know. Maybe it's just oh, one of these. Click on the next one. One of the, There's two of these that have blue. Oh, that's blue. You're right. I was on the wrong one. Alright, so we're gonna head down and get the, I think, green one from these guys. We have a variety of elemental attacks. You have the standard slash, pierce, and bludgeon. Then you have acid, you have cold, you have lightning, you have fire. I think that covers all of them. So seven different types of attacks. And that goes for both the mages and the uh, melee. And even the missile weapons, so thrown weapons. So over here. Like using the addle addle and the bow. Yeah, you just need a green one. There should be a green one somewhere over here. I opened all the corpses for you. Thank you. Get a green one. Yeah. Take the green. Get out of combat stance. You Why? Because we need to combine these. But I need the green one. Oh. You'll find it in here. Just keep clicking around. It's like I can't even see anything because there's blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, blue. So, They're so, messy. Yeah, some items aren't giveable, so I can't give that. However, I can give... Well, and I have this cast thing in the way. There we go. Give her the health kits. Did you find... Green. Found it. Now I can get out of... Out of combat stance. Okay. You want to double click... Let's see. Is... Double click the green and then press the blue. Double click the green, what do you mean? A double... When I open my satchel? Yeah. Double click the green one. Yeah. And, and then, then click press the blue. Yep. Gem. Okay. Did it. Double click the the one that you created what with you the mean, red. The blue one? Yeah, it's, it looks bluish. And then you want to click on the red one. What do you mean it looks bluish? I'll show you. <laughs> like large blue gem. Click on this one. Yeah. Go to that one. Okay, yeah. And now you have that item. Ooh, thank you. So we have the, the blood gem of Richt Azir. Okay. We're going to end the video there. Yeah. And I'm sure this is, video is a bit of a shit show, but we'll <laughs> upload it anyways. Go ahead and do slash AH. Oh. Go back to the Allegiance hometown. It's not a good idea to spawn in a dungeon because you're going to spawn in peace mode. And if you're like me and not paying attention most of the time, we'll end up dying. <laughs> Hence why my character probably has a hundred and some deaths on here. Thanks, everybody. The right. Imperiums were the ones that are there first. Yep. <laughs> and this is a Viamontian. He's one of the humanoid creatures on here they're blue and they actually have two different factions they have kind of the it's basically the star wars type 
uh, division of the faction dichotomy. You have the, the Rebel Alliance. I think that's what they're called, the Rebels. And then you have the, what, the Imperial. So the Empire. It's the same thing here. You have King, I forget his name, Arichi, I believe. The Imperial faction. And the town, it's actually the southern town on this island, Sanamar. And then up in the northern area of Silyun, you have more of the rebel faction. If you look at this map, let's say I want to run from here, Ian Bakur. And I decided oh, I'm going to run to Stonehold. And that, that is actually possible to do with Legend. Let's. I have epic run clothing somewhere. Let's say I turn on epic run, epic quickness. Or even got legendary. That's going to be a good, probably, who knows, maybe. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, somebody can correct me. It's probably a good 45 minute run to cover that area on the map. Now at this level, I could probably turn on auto run and be fine. But let's say I'm a level 60 character, like back in the day. And I needed to make it from uh, Fort Tathana to Iambicur, and nobody had a portal for me. Perhaps I'm on the on the Dark Tide server. I don't really have many friends there online. This run right here goes through what's called the Valley of Death. And back in the day, people would try to do this run and would die quite quickly. And many would die right here on the land bridge. So that's all for today. So. And wave with the J. <laughs> there, we can actually set this up. Press wave. Wave goodbye. And the only thing we did that was coordinated. And that's it for now. And please like, subscribe, and have a good day.